Welcome back. As you know, teen years are tough, and as we continue to live a life with COVID-19 concerns and quarantine separations, it's important now more than ever to check in with your children. Pediatrician, mom, and author of Raising Global Teens, Dr. Anisha Abraham, joins us this morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having this important conversation with us. Good morning. Good morning to you. So, you know, the pandemic has been hard on all of us adults, right? Why do you say we need to be especially concerned for our teens right now? Well, we know that more young people are feeling uncertain about the future. They're feeling isolated from their peers and family members. Some of them are not able to attend school or university. They're not able to do the usual activities. And so it's certainly increasing the level of kids that are reporting feeling stressed, feeling anxious, even feeling depressed. And so I think it's very, very important for us as parents, as caregivers, to be checking in right now, validating emotions and talking about these feelings. You have two boys yourself, a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old, so not quite teens just yet, almost, right? Uh, so what questions and conversations should we be having? Well, I think it's very important to take this time to be checking in with our kids and certainly setting the stage for them to come back to us if there are concerns. One of the probably helpful ways of talking to kids is asking them how their friends are feeling. Um, and certainly what their friends may be experiencing may also be a good way to talk about what they're experiencing. So have your friends been feeling uh, stressed? Have your friends been feeling like they're not able to connect? And how are you feeling? And then asking very specifically about emotions, like have you felt down or sad or life not worth living? Um, sometimes parents are afraid to ask these difficult questions thinking the more likely that these behaviors are going to occur. But I think the opposite is true. By asking these very touchy and sometimes sensitive questions, we're able to set the stage for kids to be open about these issues. What are some signs of depression? Well, it can be difficult for teenagers. Um, as you know, kids will be pulling away sometimes from parents. They may be on their in their rooms, on their devices. Um, they may be spending more time you know, communicating with peers. So sometimes it's hard to know what's really going on. But certainly if you see a big change in behavior, for example, they're much more irritable than usual. Um, they're sleeping or eating a lot more or less than before. If they're actually disconnecting um, and not connecting with their friends, um, those are certainly warning signs. And obviously, if someone's really talking about death or dying, that definitely is a reason that you need to get help right away. Yeah, so I'm years away from, from the teenage years, but those years are tough. It's not as easy as, you know, like my four-year-old, you bring her into the living room and watch some cartoons. So um, you also say that our unique situation can also be an opportunity for our teens to, to thrive. Absolutely. I'm a firm believer that um, by exposing kids to challenges and failure, that is probably the biggest predictor of success is building resilience and allowing kids to have this um, concept of having bounce and getting back up off their feet. And the pandemic um, is certainly a time where kids are experiencing a lot of loss and disappointment and changes. And so really supporting kids as they're navigating this and helping them to kind of get back up um, and certainly um, be able to handle these challenges and problem solve with them is a really wonderful life skill that we can help them with. What can we do as parents to help them thrive? Like what can we encourage them to do? Like some examples. Absolutely. So I think that routines are really important right now that provides a sense of structure for kids. Um, that, and that stability is very helpful. Certainly building on the strengths, the things that they are doing well. Every child is uneven. They're going to do well in some areas and not others. So this is a really important time to kind of build on what they do well in. Um, certainly also modeling and um, encouraging them to take time for themselves to do things that will help them to not feel so stressed. And so whether that means getting out on a bike, um, communicating with their friend, kicking a soccer ball, having some non-digital uh, time to relax. Uh, those are all very important things that we can help kids with right now. Yeah, some important one-on-one -on -one time. Quickly, can you tell me about your book, Raising Global Teens? Well, I have a book called Raising Global Teens, and it's a parenting book, and it certainly um, provides some very good tips and strategies for um, parents that are navigating this time of adolescence, particularly during the pandemic. Um, and I certainly encourage parents that want more tips and strategies uh, to turn to that book. Yeah, uh, raising teens now is way different than years ago, especially, you know, forget the pandemic. We're talking about all the technology and the way they just communicate all together. It's a little scary, I gotta be honest. 
Well, it's certainly very different than um, when many of us uh, grew up. And so being aware of these issues and talking about them and certainly reaching out to get support if you need it are so important. So I talk about technology in particular and the fact that um, technology is so important, we can't um, move away from it, mm -hmm. but certainly having parents be coaches, um, being aware of the context of what kids are actually doing right now, um, thinking about ways to provide structure. Again, it's a non-digital time, but knowing this is a very important way for kids to communicate and to learn is also important. Dr. Abraham, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank